go back to, back to toys. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the toys I'm really interested in is, uh, are ships and bottles, um, which aren't something you see very much of these days, I think. Um, they're a little nostalgic. But my uh, grandfather apparently was a ships and bottles aficionado, and he made something like 40 of these things in his basement. And I never saw any of them, though, because um, when my grandparents moved, they moved from Boston to Florida, where all old Jews go to die. Um, and uh, when they moved, they left the bottles, the ships and the bottles, in the basement of their house and just kind of abandoned them and moved. And so there's all this family lore about them, but no photographs, no evidence, no nothing to, to prove that these have been made. And I, I've always wondered what would make someone spend so much time and effort on their art and then abandon it so summarily. And um, so this is a poem about that. It's called Ships in Bottles. Somewhere inside is the sea, lapping against the transparent wall of memory. Is it vanity that makes me see the imperfections in glass? In a basement, under the hood of a lamp, a man huddles over a schooner, rigging a tiny sail with tweezers. Upstairs, his wife soaks a plate and stares out the window at the yard, where my mother, as a child, broke the bottled ocean over her knee, acting out the smallest gesture of anger. A window's for looking into, not out of. The pastness of the past isn't trapped in glass, like some vast Lascaux cave on whose walls survive the outline of a deer, or the wasp waist of a bottle's neck, through which a ship can pass unstoppered, its mast folded to fit through the narrow opening of a day. I'm tired of writing about the living as if they were already dead. Let bygones be. Let me empty the typeface on the table, above which ships launch themselves into open air. And I'll just read one more poem. Um, about another sort of famous, obsessive, uh, Harry Houdini, <laughs> who I'm also interested in. Um, and I wondered, I tried to write a funny poem, which I'm really bad at, and a happy poem. I'm also bad at that, sorry. <laughs> um, but in any case, I, I wondered, what would someone like Houdini do on his day off? He had this extraordinary kind of profession of being an escape artist. What would he do on his day off? And I thought it'd be something really, really boring like getting his picture taken or going to a picnic or something. And so I started to write a poem about that, and then it kind of became about other things as well. So thanks again for listening. And, uh, the poem's called Portrait of Houdini with Wife. <laughs> the pleasure of contrast, not chained up in an oilcloth sack underwater holding his breath, but composing himself for the camera in his only suit. You have to understand photography, unforgiving mirror, not unlike oils that soften the hard edges of a man's face if you want them to, or velvet curtain shielding the pine box during an escape. The audience imagines his bones contracting to a splinter, but that's not how it's done. The camera's lens blanketed by cloth to keep it in the dark. Any halo of light ruptures the film with shadow. His eyes already turn inwards to that place we're all going. And she thinks about escape too. At the horse butcher, in line like the others, or arguing over the, bre the price of bread at the market of innocence. Adam's rib is forever hidden inside her chest as the force of blows hides in a boxer's fist. But she, at least, is smiling when she says, 
We have such a small family, meaning your body won't open to me. It's shackled inside its cage, love and rage, whose bars are meant to be broken. Thanks.